Right, here we are. Here we are. Saturday night. What's her name? Radicani. Radicani has just won the US Open. So that's very exciting. We've had two failed attempts to uh, try and get the computer going. So I think we're in business. Yeah. And here we are. Second month in a row of actually being in the same place. It's going to be a shorter than usual video this month. Much shorter because we've, we've been watching the tennis, which was um, gripping. Gripping and earth shattering and incredible. Anyway, so yeah, what have we been listening to? Well, there's a couple of people, at least, who are going to report who aren't with us anymore. First of whom is Lee Perry, very sadly. And um, huge outpouring in the UK of uh, recognition of the genius. Definitely. Of Lee Perry. Um, I picked, uh, what do we listen to? Blackboard Jungle Dub version two from this delightful um, kind of box set featuring um, three 10 inches in red, gold, and green of, um, yeah, the tracks from the Blackboard Jungle Dub album by the pair in the Upsetters. Really lovely, lovely pressing. And um, yeah, I mean, what a genius. Yeah, absolutely. And kind of, I think everyone's realising the influence of his mm. music as well as his own stuff, I think, and other people. I didn't bring the, I actually brought a slightly wrong stack of records with me, actually. But there was, <laughs> anyway, they're good records. It's not that they were bad records. And then end up playing, um, Keith Hudson, which is and from his album Flesh of My Skin, Blood of My Blood, which was um, I think I might have shown ages and ages ago on one of the sessions we had. It's a very unusual record, really. It's it's kind of um it features a, most of the usual crew from the from Jamaica, but also it's quite a lot of the UK musicians on there as well. But three or four of the tracks don't have any drums on, which is incredibly mm. unusual for for a, a roots reggae album, but it's still a great record. And this was the reissue that came out, I think about four or five years ago on basic replay, which is the basic channel um, reissue. But it's a classic record, this one, real kind of, and it gets more and more kind of abstract and weird as the record goes on as well, kind of, and yeah, good stuff anyway. Mm, sounded really, really nice. Yeah. Um, so yeah, basic channel has definitely been a bit of a feature for me since our last video since discovering this um, German label run by a couple of guys in Berlin who um, just were making incredible kind of electronic dub music in the mid nineties. And uh, there's not that many releases, but the releases that there are are absolutely worth snapping up. And we discovered Honest John's, well, in fact, John told me Honest yeah. John's um, are one of their distributors and all of the 12 inches 10 inches albums are available at very reasonable prices this is where i bought um this one which is uh called history um and it's who is it it's the chosen brothers making history not very exciting 10 inch um but just sounds is absolutely stupendous on the speakers here full yeah, range really, really frequencies and just an incredibly immersive deep sort of uh hypnotic throbbing techno dub bass experience <laughs> so um yeah i if you don't know if you like reggae or or if you like electronic music actually go you know check out basic channel you yeah. won't be disappointed and also the um they also have a narration that with wackies and the american mm. um reggae label as well so you can get all of the stuff um, well, you can get it in the UK, you can get it all from Honest John's, but internationally, you can get it all from their website, Basic Channel website. So I, I and then we had a switch, we had a lot of switches of gear, actually, as we went through the through the um, session, but I moved on to, but had a, had a real Gil Scott Evans, Gil Scott Evans, Gil Scott Heron <laughs> um, phase this month, actually, I've been listening to a lot of his stuff, and uh, particularly some of the ones I hadn't kind of really focused on quite as much as his earlier work, and uh, this is from the album, 1980 which came out in 1979 and um features um gil scott heron and uh, brian jackson but also with tonto the um the uh, um malcolm cecil bob margaloof kind of um synthesizer set up as mm. well and it's kind of it's got some great songs on this record and i think the later period stuff is actually sounding quite good to me at the moment as well from from gil mm. um 
Well, John and I are off to a record fair in Whitstable tomorrow to actually sell some records. And uh, we've both been compiling sort of fairly substantial piles of records that might make the, um, the cull. And uh, of course, you know, before a record gets sold, you just want to check that you actually don't want to see it again. This was a record um, that was going to was going to make the cut. Um, and then I put it on and actually thought it sounded really nice. It's we think an Icelandic band called Hajal Tallinn. Um, and the album's called Enter Four, and it's on a very attractive yellow vinyl. Um, what can I say? Just, yeah, it has sort of got a sort of Icelandic-y kind of sound, but just, again, sort of lots of depth in the production. Um, nice vocals. I kind of wonder whether it wasn't like somebody from the vinyl community who recommended it in the first place, actually. Maybe a few years Possibly. Ago. Definitely. Yeah. Nice. Then something I've definitely shown before on um, on the community, but my favourite, still my favourite bit of cheap each, really, which is the Car Wash soundtrack by Rolls Royce, and particularly the track Summer, um, Sunrise, sorry, which is a classic kind of Norman Whitfield instrumental jam. Whole album's great, and it's a, uh, most vinyl seems to be going up and up in price. This seems to be going down and down in price. <laughs> so if you haven't got this, just go and buy it. It's absolutely, absolutely. it's a great sounding record. It's also got some wonderful kind of bits of Richard Pryor on here as well, which are kind of priceless as well. So car wash. Great arrangement. Great arrangement. As was a great arrangement and a terrible cover. Possibly <laughs> shown this before. The arranger Richard Evans, um, who definitely should be within the same um, sentence as Norman Whitfield and Gene Page. Um, we listened to a track called Capricorn Rising, featuring the wonderful vocals of Linda Williams, who is also probably most recognised from the track Elevate Your Mind. Mm. Um, yeah, just great, great kitchen sink arrangement, loads of stuff happening, very Latin-y. Um, yeah, lovely. Very nice. Another thing I think we might have shown before as well was Ryan Orca's Oblivion Express and his album Reinforcements, which is probably the worst ever cover on a record. I think it has a real, it's really up there. Everyone wearing knitted tank tops. <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of a, it, a, lot, a lot of criticism at the time but when it came out. I remember people were saying that um, Brian Orca was going to sound like average white band. It does sound a bit like the average white band, I think. It's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all. And we heard the track The Big Yin of that, which is a kind of up tempo, kind of soul, slightly Latin vibe with a um, very nice organ solo from Brian Orga on it. It's not as great as his, I mean, to be honest, his earlier albums are much better than this one, but it's got two or three good tracks on it, this mm. one, and also costs an absolute cheap beat. Mm. Well, John mentioning um, the average white band was reminding me that I've been listening to the second of um, Hamish Stewart from the average white band's Soho radio shows. And in fact, he played the track that I, was, that I then played next, which was from the uh, Earth, Wind and Fire um, album Gratitude, which is three sides live and one side studio. And we listened to the wonderful tune that I think they collaborated on with them. Um, Ramsey, Ramsey Lewis called Sun Goddess. Yeah. With some, yeah, fantastic sax playing. Did we work out whether it was Ronnie? Goss? No, it was Ronnie. He left the band by then. Okay, but yeah, great soloing, great album. Um, next up, 100% Pure Poison. This was a record I thought I had, and I went to play it, but largely I think because um, Seca Funk showed it on his, um, on his um, Instagram channel, only to find out that I didn't have it. So, um, and, and then the following day, I got an email from Soul Brother down in, um, in, in Southwest London and saying they found, just found a box of their reissue, and, uh, which is kind of perfect timing, really. So I picked one up and it's 100% pure. But they're a band out of um, Chicago. I think they're out of Chicago. Are they out of Chicago? Yeah, I'm sure they're out of Chicago. And, um, and played the track, The Windy Sea, off that, which has also been featured on quite a lot of kind of rare groove compilations at different times as well. And they're another band who really only made one major record and this, and, uh, this was it. And it sounded good. It sounded very good. Um, some of you all know that I'm involved in an organisation called Heart and Soul. And um, it's a, an arts organisation charity based in the UK. 
Um, this is an album which has been done in collaboration with Soho Radio and Heart and Soul. And um, yeah, this is artwork from one of our artists called Asia. Um, and uh, it's basically an album of uh, tracks that were recorded direct to lathe, sort of recorded live in the Soho Radio studio where they've got uh, yeah, direct to sort of uh, vinyl disc setup. So everybody who's on this is playing with no overdubs and is recorded entirely live. And it features, you know, artists like Dennis Bavel and uh, Sean, Sean Cootie and uh, Terry Walker, um, Joel Culpepper, Madison McFerrin. So great company and all proceeds go to heart and soul. Very nice package. Very, very it's nice called package. Together Heart and Soul. It's a beautiful package. Very nice, put together. Very nice um, pressing as well. Yeah, and um, so next up I played um, um, Little Sunflowers, a favourite tune of both Mark and I, I think. Mm. Actually. And I hadn't played the original version for a very long time and I played it this week and it sounded good. This is off Freddie Hubbard's, I think it was his first or second album on Atlantic. He had a period on Atlantic in between um, between Blue Note and when he moved on to uh, uh, to where did he go after then CTI of course and um, yeah just sounded great James Spalding always always sounds good on records and uh, also has some great um, conga playing from Ray Barretto on mm, as well. sounded great um, obviously since we uh, last did a video very sadly lost Charlie Watts the Rolling Stones drummer and um, I played Hey Negrita from the album Black and Blue. And there is Charlie looking very loose and um, smart compared to everybody else. <laughs> yeah, again, I mean, a lot's been said about Charlie Watts, but something about that um, backbeat and that, did we talk about him last time? I don't think we did. No, I don't, I think, I'm not sure, he, I think he hadn't died. I don't I think, think he had died, yet. no. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, that sort of, um, yeah, he was the engine with with um, Keith Richards, really, of the band. Yeah, Absolutely. So I carried on with my continuing the continuing saga of me and the Tedeschi Trucks band, and played the <laughs> track, the live track off this uh, EP, which was called High and Mighty, which came out um, just after their last album, and played the track Shame, which is the live track off there, very full on kind of sounding track, lots of. Uh, Great guitar playing from Derek Trucks, as usual, and the whole band really going for it. Very those, dynamic stuff. Very yeah. dynamic, and um, great to hear they're back on the road again as well, with a um, slightly different lineup, but sounding good. Mm. Well, um, talking of great guitar players, this is um, the album Yes, We Have No Manonas from Kevin Ayers, um, and features the wonderful fretwork of a guitarist called Ollie Hulsall, who I'm sure very few people have ever heard of. He played also in a band called Pato and another band called Boxer. And um, if you sort of start hunting around um, for his name on YouTube, you'll find many, um, many people who know about guitarists really, really rating him. And he, he's all over the track Blue, which is the final track on side two. Kind of, yeah, I mean, I, I don't really want to compare him to Alan Holdsworth because I think he's he's got more soul, but he's got that kind of rapid fluidity of um, fretwork. He kind of just goes all over the place. Astonishing player and just really has had no recognition at all, has he? Not really, no. But always stayed with them, Kevin Ayers. Um, Kevin Ayers, of course, who was an original Soft member Machine. of Soft Machine and, yeah. and briefly played with Gong, apparently. Yeah. Um, and stayed in my flat for a whole day of fear and loathing in Brighton. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very nice day, but we, a, lot, a lot of things were consumed, put it like that. <laughs> um, I've been looking for this on vinyl for a long time, but at, at a reasonable price, and finally managed to find it. This is Wilco, so of course, Yankee Hotel, Foxtrot. And for some reason, I don't know whether it's just a cover, it's always it's felt like a bit like a 9 11 album to me. And of course, today is 9 11. And, yes, yes. Um, yeah, I just remember playing this a lot around that kind of time as well. And um, yeah, um, played the track I'm Trying to Break Your Heart, which was when um, Jim O'Rourke started to get involved with the band and mixing wise. And it's kind of amazingly dense kind of mix. And yeah, it's great. And the vinyl looks great. Nice, big, thick 
cover from none such do a really good when they've okay they do put the stuff out in vinyl it's really usually really nicely done and this was done with um sundays as well so mm. anyway no one knows who will go off yeah so this is uh not such a nicely put together album i have to say in terms of it's a it is a double vinyl but it's um the actual quality of the image is quite poor you, you can't see anything it's yeah. Anyway, this is Moody Man and uh, Moody, Han Moody Man presents Mahogany Brown, which I think 19, okay, 1998 out on Peace Frog Records, which is a, a UK uh, mastering setup and label. And we listened to the title track, uh, Moody Man. John Risting, <laughs> quite a dismissive critique, I have to say, if you were listening to this, this track. But I, I was sort of reminding him that. Um, the innovations around kind of removing frequencies from dance tracks sort of slightly was starting with Moody Man. So in 2021, it doesn't sound quite as cutting edge, but... Um, I just I just yeah. always had this image when I hear his music, of you always see him moving the faders up and down. So, <laughs> I, just never seems like. so I went for something that really is incredibly lo-fi and very, um, but also quite fun. And this was, this was part of an amazing package we got from um, Stavros in uh, Philadelphia. We both got one. We of both those. got one of these, yeah. And um, this is an album by JPQ, and it's called Quintessence, which was, a, I think, a, definitely a kind of private press number from 1980, I think it was originally, uh, 1983, and play the track E Jam Sandwich, which is um, a kind of very, very basic kind of funky hip hop. Mm. with some nice some great guitar playing on mm. it as well and the album's really kind of it's kind of i think charming is a word for it actually <laughs> don't know if I'm, i think of albums being charming but it's a really it's a it's a and it was a much it was an incredibly rare record before it got repressed by um light in the attic a little while ago as well nice stuff mm, that sounded really good um yeah well i went also very low fi this i definitely know for a fact is recorded on a four track and it's Cody Chestnut and his album, The, the Headphone Masterpiece. And we listened to track 14. Um, and I noticed this has just been reissued on vinyl. Um, although I have to say, given the kind of general recording quality, I'm not sure it's going to be enhanced by the vinyl release. Uh, we listened to an incredibly funky beat, which lasts for one minute precisely, called Batman versus Black Man. And I highly recommend you you tune into that if you like your deep funky beats. So no, if you, I mean it's an amazing, strange record, really. Yeah. It's kind of they all they but then they sound like demos, but they're not really demos at all. You obviously intended them to be like that. Mm. There's some great songs on there as well, there actually. Are. Really, yeah. really good stuff. Yeah. I mean it's 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 kind of almost a rock record in a way, really. Yeah. It's sort of yeah, hard to know what to describe that. Um, uh, before we went for the ten, we ended up with. Oh, it's always worth ending up with the Isley Brothers, really. And uh, I played the track uh, "You're Beside Me" off this. This is a kind of little bit overlooked. This one, I think, when it takes all. It's a double album. A lot of mostly really funky jams on here, but there are two or three hidden away, kind of mid-tempo, typical Isley Brother, beautiful mid-tempo tracks. With um, we were just thinking about what a great drummer. And yeah, I mean, we all, of course, know he's a fantastic guitarist, but he also is a fantastic drummer, Ernie Isley, as mm. well. Just had a really kind of great, almost kind of anticipated being sampled in a strange kind mm. of way. It's kind of like very a, minimal. Very minimal sounded. And yeah, you can never have too many Isley brothers. Absolutely. Some, uh, a good friend of mine said the only thing men should me measure is how many Isley brother albums they have on, this, on their shelves. <laughs> Wow, just okay. was quite good. Right in that case. <laughs> yeah. So, um, as ever, thank you for all the the nice comments and um, good vibes. And uh, anybody who who gets to tune into our radio stations, thank you for listening. Yeah. And uh, yeah, have a have a good time. And we'll be back with a slightly more longer session. Yes, time. this was a rather this is a short one, but um, take care. See you soon. Everyone.